Hello, happy new year and happy January. I am here today with the lovely Julian Fairburn. And today we are going to do a little demonstration on how to clean a shotgun. Now, many of you already know inside out and back to front how to clean your gun, but just in case you don't, or you're curious, or you've got any questions, Julian is gonna give us a demonstration. So I have brought in my lovely Beatrice the Bressa, who is a little bit dirty. And so Julian is gonna take us through the whys, the whats, the wheres, the hows. And so let's crack on and see how dirty it is. Right, Jules, let's start with cleaning my gun. How do we start? Well, obviously take it out the slip. Yeah. Break it open, make sure it's empty. Okay. You have seen it's filthy. It's not that bad. <laughs> it did have a ball snake down it the other day. It's not that bad. So we'll close it. Okay. Stand it up on the end? Yep. Take the fore end off. Okay. Always put the fore end down in the middle of the table. Yep. Like that. Okay. Why? Well, if you put it like that, okay, it will roll. And then if you put it on the edge, you can roll, smash, and then you're into a new fore end. Bit of a pickle. the table, like that. Okay. Yeah. Barrels off the action. Yep. Lay the action on the stock down. Yep. And you're left with the barrels. Okay. Now, this is the way I do it. Okay. Some purists will say it's the wrong way. Some people won't have a clue, but this is the way I do it. Okay. So Go I for it. So I piece of tissue, kitchen roll. Yep. And I'll make a little plug with it. Okay. Yeah. What Where's I the plug do, going? It's going in there. Okay. Yeah? Yep. To the end. We'll get, get your cleaning rod. Yep. Pop it down to the end of the barrel. Put your finger on the end of the barrel. Push it down. And when you can feel the cotton, or the tissue rather, at the end, that's a little bung. Can you see? Yep. Yeah. Do that on the top barrel. On piece of paper, fold it up. Kitchen roll's the best because it's really absorbent, takes all the muck and the grease out. Yeah? So we're just taking the worst of it out by doing yeah, that? Well, we are in a bit, but we're also making a bung. Okay. So that I can spray some cleaning fluid down there. Oh, I see, so that it doesn't fall out the, um, drip out the bottom. Also, don't do this on the dining room table because it is a bit messy. So okay. get yourself a piece of newspaper. I'm lucky because I've got a nice leather cleaning pad here yep yeah so something that's not going to leave on the mark on the table for your wife your boyfriend your girlfriend your mum your dad to go berserk with or a so, bit of like cardboard or something yeah that'd be fine or do it in the garage or the garden shed okay so two bungs yep yeah now we get a cleaner so we've got napier what one are we using i'm using napier cleaner and proferum proferum's a double-edged sword so really good stuff a little Let's bit more expensive how much would that set you back uh that one's six pound fifty and this one is 1750. 1750 okay that is an all-rounder it's a lubricant it's a cleaner and it's a waterproof pellet so that's really the one stuff. that i use on my shotgun when i get it wet isn't yeah. it <laughs> so there to avoid so what we do first yep Give your old cleaner a shake. In the bore, make sure you haven't got it in your face. Give it a clean. Yeah. Give it a squirt. Both barrels. And now you'll see why we put the bung in there. To stop it coming out the end. Stop it coming out. So what we do is just rotate that around a few times. Yep. Leave it in there. Some of the, the um, cleaner will evaporate, which is fine, but it will have <laughs> loosened and flushed the dirt. Okay. Yeah? Yep. With the proferum, I'd squirt that in there and then go and make a cup of tea while it works. Okay. And does its magic. So I'm interested to see where the screwdriver comes into play, or the Not drill, the drill the rather, drill. So the drill. The days of hand work, rodding it out, they're gone. You've been a cordless drill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? In we go. Yeah? Yep. So, what we do now, push that in. Yep. Yeah? And start spinning it. So, Jules's battery's just died. So, we're just going to try again with a new battery. Does it work? It works. Go on then, try it. Right. Okay. So, now what we do yep. is give it a good old rod in. 
Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to give it a good old rod in now. Yeah. So this is cleaning. Now some people will be, no, oh, you can't do that. Why not? Absolutely saves all the pain and labour. Pay, pay attention to just past the chambers, past the forcing cone, this three, first three, four inches. That's where all the detritus happens, the burnt powder, the scorch marks from the plastic or fibre wads. That's the marking that you'll see. Do it this way, you'll polish it out. And then when you get to the end and the brush is nearly there, yep. stop. Okay. And pull it out. And let's just have a look what's coming out. A lot of dirt. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> it's quite dirty. And that's the bung that's just that come was out the of the bung, again. which you must remove, obviously. Now, if you look down there, that's cleaner than a clean thing, but we'll show you that in a minute. What I'm going to do now is just pass that bung back down through to wipe out any residual dirt. There you go. So now you see the state of that bung. That was all the dirt that that's was in there. That's all the filth that you left in there, young lady. You should be ashamed. Disgusting. <laughs> Anyway, grab hold of it. Yep. Fire it up. Gently up and down the ball. You might actually even feel it getting warm, which is no bad thing. Yeah? Yep. In and out. Nice and smoothly. How many times would you go up and down? Depends on how filthy you leave it. Three or four times should sort it out. So for quite a dirty gun like mine, three or four times. About an hour of bore, probably, the way this is there. <laughs> So I'm going to finish there. There we go. There's my little plug coming out the end. Ooh, uh. Ooh, uh. Right. So. Yeah. What we do, we leave the chokes in until we've done this. Yeah. Why yeah. do you leave them in? Because all the dirt that's being pushed down the bore yeah. will go into the seat of the choke otherwise. And then you won't be able to seat the choke properly and then that causes problems. So okay. I'm going to pass that bung down through again. Yep. Going down and again. Okay. Oh. Now I'm going to look up the light. You can see a mirror in there. So again, that's the dirt, snot, snivel that's come out. This is why I use kitchen roll. It's more absorbent than some of the 4 by 2 it's cheaper as well. Okay. All right, so really good stuff. Lighted area, and you can see. So let's have a little look to see how clean can they you are. See that? I think that's the cleanest they've ever been. Yeah. Well, wow, be aren't surprised. they shiny? Yes. <laughs> now, you'll also get some residue on the face here, on the okay. boot faces let's have a and, little the, look. and the ejectors. Yeah. Yeah, see that dirt? How do we get that off? Well, we'll show you in a minute. Okay. And also, now we also, this is the time to take the choke out. Okay. So I'm going to do them by finger because. Leanne hasn't bought a choke key, and I've sold my last one today. Whoopsie. Yes. I think it's in my cabinet. I do have one. I might have two, actually. Yeah. But I just didn't, didn't bring them. Didn't think of me when she uh, came out in a rush. Well, it's so clean, I thought they'll come out so easily. Luckily, I've got good, strong fingers. Oh, God. But not that strong. So we just got my um, chokes out. Filth. Filth. Look at it. I mean, they might not should have been be out. Yeah, I probably should, should be. be ashamed. Poor little Beatrice was a little bit dirty. So, what we do now, and wipe them. Now, we're very lucky. There is actually a little bit of oil on these. Oh, good. So, it's still <laughs> dirty. But. What chokes do I have in anyway? Uh, quarter in that one. So dirty, I can't see half. Lovely combination. I think Give um, the thread a clean. Okay. Yeah, so that's the thread, that's the seat. That's important that that's clean. And it's also important that when we look down into the inside here, yep. again, using a little bung, you push that in, and you'll feel it bump up against the seat. Let's give it a twist. Twist it, and that will clean the threads out. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> if that was my ears, I wouldn't be able to hear. You can't hear anyway. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> right, same again on the other one. Ooh. I'm guessing that's equally as dirty. Probably. 
At least there was oil in it. Well, saving grace. Because otherwise it's a seized choke and they're a nightmare to get out. Unless you have a chokey. <laughs> well, even with them sometimes. So yes, more filth. <laughs> right. Also, I'm just going to wipe the end of the barrel there because there is residue from when I was using the... The drill. Phosphor bronze brush, pushing it out through. Now, okay. got to wipe that one. Because again, filth. <laughs> If you find some carbon buildup, which is a black there, yeah. you can use a bit of light stainless uh, steel wool yeah. and just rub it. It won't hurt the choke, but it'll get the carbon buildup off. Do you just rub it in circular motions or yeah, just, left just to right? It and literally hold it and twist it like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it won't cause any damage. Nope. Right. So there's the two chokes. Yeah, nice the and clean. The insides of the balls are clean. Yeah. Yeah, we'll worry about the outside in a minute. I'm just gonna show you one other little thing. Now this, I don't recommend you doing too often and I don't recommend you doing it if you're a little bit ham-fisted because you can cut your fingers. I'm gonna take the ejectors out. Yep. And I'm gonna clean them because the chances are they're not. So this is a Beretta. This is a system. You do need a rag as well because your, your springs are sharp and it will. So you'll pinch your fingers. No, it won't pinch them, it will cut them. Oh Lord. Yes. Glad you're but, doing this, not yeah, me. Yeah, so am I. So push it in, twist it out. Don't let it go. Look at the filth in behind there. Right, so there's your plunger and your spring. Yep. And this is the channel. That channel needs to be clean. That's on a dovetail. I'll yeah. be honest, I don't think I've ever taken that out. No, well, that's probably the best thing. As long as you keep a little drop of oil in there, it shouldn't hurt. But use a cloth like I am, an old T-shirt. Yeah. Used to fit me once. Um, <laughs> and then what we need to do, have a look in there, there's dirt will trap up and down on there. Yeah. And it'll get a bit gritty and you'll feel it sometimes. So if we just wipe it off, no need to do anything technical with it. Wipe it off. How often would you recommend that someone takes that out? Uh, if you're competent, you know, Every five, six hundred rounds wouldn't hurt, but if you if you don't feel comfortable doing it, you can always take it to your local gun shop, and I'm sure they'll help you or yeah, someone. They will. But you can just we'll see give again, you a hand. There's a little bit. Obviously, that's lubrication, but there's also picking up dirt there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, either a tissue. The plunger does come out. But that's the, that's not that dirty, seeing it's as they haven't come bad, out no, for years. It's just literally years. It's just part of a clean. And then, obviously, if you have a gun cleaned and serviced yeah. by a gunsmith, then... They will, would take that out. They can, yeah, and they will sometimes repair, uh, replace them. Yeah. Also, the seat down in here needs a clean out. Yeah. And I'm just going to do one Do my ejectors thing. need replacing? Oh, or they're, they're okay? fine. Perfect. I'm just going to clean that chamber. There's a bit of residue there. And you can see the seat where the cartridge sits. Yeah. Yeah, that also could do with a little rub out. But again, it's probably better when we do it with the second ejector out. And again. Okay, so let's watch how you get this one out. So what we're doing on this? Secret, I can't top the <laughs> right, go. So what we're doing? We're pushing. Pushing in. You've got a little scallop there. Yeah. And if you can imagine that yep. level there, that sits on. Uh, that's the scallop. We twist it out. Okay. Yeah. So we push in twist out and I just felt it but as I twisted out the spring bumped that into my finger now if you haven't got a cloth to catch it in that'll shoot across the kitchen floor go under the fridge you'll never find it and then you'll be cussing okay yeah so out with the plunger out with the spring yep now you see there yeah oh yeah filth oh dear yeah so this will affect the performance of the ejectors. Which is why I probably miss quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> probably. <laughs> or the fact that you just... Don't it, practice enough. Yes. So give it a wipe. Give the jewel in a wipe there. Yep. Best thing to do, obviously there's plenty of oil being slathered around this in compensation for actually cleaning it. But... Um, well, at least I oil it. Well, it won't go rusty, but it... It will gum up. Right, so they're clean and dry now. Yep. Yeah. Nice and shiny. Yeah. So that's the point of now re-lubricating them. Now, 
So we've got the plunger. Got to put it all back together. Yeah, in reverse order. So. Now you don't have to do this every time. And if you do, do it somewhere that if you fire that out, because it will come out in a rate of knots. I feel like you need to be confident to take the ejectors out yes. in order to clean them. They are sharp. Those but also, are sharp. And I have cut myself numerous times and allegedly I know what I'm doing. If you don't really know what you're doing, though, is it advisable for you to take your ejectors out just because if you put it back together incorrectly, could it be um, not safe or...? Well, it won't work properly. Simply okay, so it just won't work. Yeah, you... Um, yeah. So, but really, it's something that unless you know what you're doing... Leave it well Leave alone. it well alone and yeah. ask for some advice. Yes. Okay, right. cool. So, lubrication. Anything is better than nothing. Apart yeah. from WD-40. We don't like WD-40 on guns. I so guess. a question that I've got for you, Jules, yeah. is you've just mentioned not to use WD-40. I have seen several people using WD-40 on their guns. Yeah, some people do. Why it's Why a, do they use it and why shouldn't you use it? Well, it's it? a great product, but it's better for unseizing seized things rather than lubricating. Yeah, Like you'd use it in your door lock, wouldn't you? Like your back door yeah. if it got seized up. And so when I see people using it on their gun, I'm just... Does it yeah. cause damage? It can take the blacking off. So it can, can it stain the wood as well if it gets uh, yeah, onto the wood? Yeah, on that either. So okay. You, you use a gun shop provided gun oil. It's good stuff. We okay. use the Proferrum. We love it. Yeah? Yep. I want to put a light lube, a little spray of this down there. You can see it just rolling in. Yeah. That's just to help... That was a very the, light spray as well, Yeah, it doesn't it? need to be heavy, heavy. Yeah. Yep. You can have a little squirt down the down the spring hole. Like just a baby to, squirt. Yes. Okay, so we're putting spring. spring. In. Yeah. And that spring, I don't know if you can What's see that. What's that that goes in there. with it? This is the plunger, ejector plunger. That sits inside the spring to there. Yep. Yeah. Now I've got to make sure I've got the right ejector leg. For the right side. For the right side, which I have. So that's and then again we've got to reverse the procedure. So you see that flat there? Yeah. And this is only typical to the Berettas. Okay. You see that little flat there? That's got to go into that scallop there. So what we do is we line it up. The plunger's got to go in the back of the ejector. Line it up. Hold it all together. We get to that point and then we twist down. We twist it round. And that's yeah? him. And that sits in. Yeah. That's in there properly now. Okay. Okay. So we get the other side. How do we tell which leg goes on which side? I'm guessing because that, that points that downwards. That leg there faces downwards on the correct side okay. and then it will marry up to the correct yep. receiver there. So again, drop of oil, a little light squirt, yeah? Baby little, squirt in. Baby squirt and a little little bit in there. It comes out the vent hole there. Yep. Spring. Spring. Plunger. Plunger, make sure he's clean. Lovely and clean. Plunger. Plunger. Ejector. Ejector. Now I cleaned that one. I've dropped my rag on the floor. I cleaned that one earlier. So again, lay it on the top. And it's dovetailed, so you put the, the top dovetail in. Get your rag, because it will cut you otherwise. <clears throat> and we're going to do the roll now, Push aren't we? and roll, exactly. There you go. And then when you press it, it's all... Awesome. Yeah. That's him. So we've done the inside of the barrels and we've done the ejectors. What's next, Jules? We're going to do a quick wipe over of the outside, make sure there's no dirt and detritus on there. I'm sure there isn't. Detritus. I'm sure there is. <laughs> so again, use the old faithful oily rag. Okay. Now, on a rainy day. Yes. Really, you want two, two slips with you on a rainy day. One to carry around all day. One, two. You should be doing this when you get back to the clubhouse or the or the lodge you should clean the barrels down yeah yeah and then put your gun away put your gun as best as you can into a dry slip dry area okay right, so that's the outside wiped down yeah i'm now going to put the chokes back in make sure i've got them in the right order so first of all a light loom now you can do it either on the choke like that so it's literally drop of oil Give it a smear around. Yeah. yeah. And then put that in. That's a half choke in the top there. 
What happens if you don't put that on when you put your chokes back in? Uh, it's, you, then you need to take them out nearly every time you clean the gun and make sure that you haven't got too much carbon buildup and they're stuck. Or moisture. To make sure they're not stuck. And make sure they're not stuck. So that's okay. in finger tight. And you've tightened that up in a minute with a choke key if you had one. <laughs> um, again, bottom barrel in this case. So I've got plenty of oil on me top there. Give it a smear around, plenty in the threads. Yep. Yeah. And then pick that up into the bottom barrel. Spin the chokes up. See how easy they're going in compared with how hard they were to come out. <laughs> yes. It's going nice and clean. Yeah, lack of maintenance. So finger in there. That's nipped up. Again, a nip up in a minute with the choke key. Yep. So I've, because I've got oily hands, there's a bit of oil on the barrels. That's no problem. Quite, I quite like to use that sparingly over the outside yeah yeah and they are basically clean marvelous <laughs> why are you shaking your head it's let me bad. have a look it's not that bad let it me is. see look, it's got debris in there let all that dead gunpowder and debris and i mean leafage. it's not the worst i've what's ever that? seen what's that in there what in there look it's a clinker I don't actually know. <laughs> I've been out in the bush shooting. So how are we cleaning that out? Just for a little bit of tissue. Okay, yes, I know. It's disgusting. Now, the nice thing about a Beretta, it's very easy to clean inside. There's not a lot of area that traps dirt. Yeah? Yep. One area we've got to clean is the push rods. Yeah. You can see just on the edges there, there's a bit of dirt. Yep. Yeah. So we'll give that a clean. Best way to get clean the inside of this is give it a little squirt of stuff and then get a toothbrush and... Yeah? Yeah. Mind your eyes. Best to do this stuff in a well-vented room. And I've got your toothbrush. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so we've given that a good old squirt out of the detergent and cleaner. Now, I get in there... It's quite dirty, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And once you once you see the dirt gone, you realise how dirty it was. It's going to be like new. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but it's going to be lovely. Ready for Beater's Day. Well, look out. Look out, Fezzies. Pheasant Preservation Day, shall well, I call it? Like it. Yeah. <laughs> so just getting in and around all the surfaces... Yeah, stir up the muck. And you can't cause any damage by scrubbing too hard? No, not with a soft soft brush, not at all. Oh, so that is a soft bristle yeah, rather yeah, yeah, than yeah, a hard yeah. one? That was mine six months ago. <laughs> I'm going to go I was okay. going to say, for your dentures. For my dentures, exactly. Right. So that loosens all of the dirt? That's just loosened all the dirt. Now, there's another way of doing it. You can now flush it Yeah. with the same stuff, because this is a flusher and a lubricant. Okay. There's other products on the market. Tetra is a very good one. The Action Blast is actually very, very good. Not too much oil or lubricant go in that way because it will go down the firing pin holes and then soak into the stock. Also, we're cleaning metal work. So we've got the top lever open. That's good. We can get in under there. Yep. Yeah. Also, never forget to move your safety catch. If it's on, take it off because water can lay in underneath that yeah also blowing out any uh moisture that's under the top lever so just a little whizzle under there with your toothbrush that'll help and then the other thing to do is just take the top lever pressure off get your toothbrush fiddle around let the top lever spring go with the with that one yeah the trip and then you can get to the other side and again, oh, okay. give it a wipe. There's always dirt in there and always dirt in there. So just give it a clean little toothbrush in out. Yep. Yeah. Like a new pin. And this basic maintenance, it also helps receive, retain the value in your gun. Because if you've got to go and trade it in for an upgrade or something like that, nobody wants a dirty gun. That's very, very true. Although I should imagine there's plenty on the shelf in here. <laughs> so we clean the... Breach face, we clean the chassis bottom. Okay. The knuckles are clean and dry. The, pin, the trunnions are clean and dry. Just literally all round, 
bit of oily rag, just giving everything a wipe. Your trigger, your trigger guard. Your trigger will be um, affected by sweaty fingers in the summer. And also up the side of the trigger guard, you get oil and debris. Because the debris will stick to the oil. Yep. So there, it's now nice and clean. Give it a wipe inside and out the trigger guard. And really, because simple maintenance doesn't take that long. No. It, this is pretty long because of the camera. I'm doing a lot of chatting. I'm trying to be funny. It doesn't always work. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the metalwork cleaned. Got some woodwork just to wipe over. Now you can treat your wood with um, a conditioning oil or something like that. Or you can just give it a bare minimum clean. You can use stuff like the leisure spray from Browning. That doesn't hurt. This is an all round oil. Yep. So wood. You can see I'm putting a bit of luster in there. If your gun gets soaking wet through in the in the game season or clay shooting or whatever, when you get home, you should have dried it before you left home or before you left the club, but your woodwork will be wet and damp. Yep. Do not put it by the radiator. Do not put it in the airing cupboard. Do not put it by the arger. Leave it in the corner of the room to dry out overnight and let the wood come naturally dry. Don't force dry it. Can I ask if you do put it by the arger yeah. or by the radiator, yeah. what happens? Why would you advise against that? Not always, but sometimes you can crack the stock because the wood will move too quickly towards the heat and stuff. Yep. or um, just drying out too quickly. It's a bit like leather boots. They'll crack if you force dry them too quickly. Okay. You should just let it naturally dry. Okay. And then treat it with some linseed-based oil. Okay. <laughs> She's got a terrible cough and she's blaming me. <laughs> Jules, there yeah. are many different oils that you can use on the wood. Yep. When I first bought this Beretta, it was second hand. And I don't know if you remember that I bought um, Beatrice the Beretta in and she had a little bit of staining. Yes. And that was from walnut oil. Yes. That had been used obviously on the wood and then it had gone onto the metalwork. Would you advise against walnut oil? No. No? Just, what... just apply it properly. So it was just. It's the... basically like overspray on a car. Do it properly. So it was just my. The previous owner had just, yeah, just whacked over, it on. Overuse of it. I Is it? Haven't, haven't wiped it off properly around here. Other than WD-40, are there any other products that you would say you shouldn't use that is commonplace that a lot of people do use or rave about? Not really. Um, you know, it's got to be, there's no point putting three and one oil on your wood because that's a motor in type of oil. The proprietary <laughs> gun cleaner, Leaves your spray brown in, that's used all over. That's a bit like Brute 33, you splash it all over. I use it as deodorant, works wonders. Um, but okay. it's one of those things that you can use, yeah. just like I did, but a liberal spray. So I just put it all over your gun. One thing we did forget was to clean this area, because that Ooh. bears. Let's have a little look. That's in there. Which bit did we forget to clean? This, this bit, the four okay. end iron. So you can see there's a little bit of dirt not much and dead oil no it won't be too much but you can feel it gritty sometimes and that scratches your your knuckles on your action so just to wipe over like that god look how nice my stock looks yeah a wipe through like that yeah and another little thing that won't hurt occasionally just a little drop of your linseed oil you see where this has been shaved to fit mm -hmm. doesn't hurt to have a drop of oil on it oh so it doesn't go too dry and crack yeah, yeah. well and it doesn't absorb too much moisture Okay. And then swell and crack. So this just needs a rub over. Yep. Yeah. About two or three years ago, I accidentally put my gun away in the, in the cabinet when it was a little bit damp. And so to prevent that from happening again, I came in and Jules recommended the Proferum wet drying gun care fluid. Now, when I get back, um, I wouldn't say I'm lazy, but I just want to speed up the drying process. I do have a large bit of cardboard that I store behind the dresser in my kitchen. I put that on my kitchen table along with a bit of newspaper. I break it all down and I spray this all over it and then leave it for about 30 minutes and then dry it off with kitchen roll. And then that prevents it from rusting. rusting. So that is, I swear by this stuff. 
because it speeds up the drying process. The truth is, she doesn't do any of that. She just brings it in here and I have to clean it and do a silly <laughs> video on it. But the day you bought it in with rust all over it, yep. the Proferum lifted the rust after some careful application. Yep. It is good stuff. It was I'm speckled with it, rust. Well, yeah. It. it was speckled with, um, with rust and I was very emotional about poor Beatrice. I thought she was dead. But he saved the day. Pots have been chucked over it. <laughs> so we've cleaned the gun, the, the barrels. We take the ejectors out, give them a spruce up, clean the action, forehand iron, and we put a little bit of oil on the gun stock. Yep. So whether that be leisure spray, lazy man's way of doing it, but great stuff, or CCL conditioning oil, or any of the proprietary other brands. Slippery Dex is another one. So what we're going to do now little pre-lube again i use the pro ferrum just on the knuckles a little dribble yeah you just see that running around little dribble on there don't need to over oil but you need to oil i prefer oil to grease because grease sort of traps the grit and the dirt yeah and it sits in so now we've lubed the trunnions the knuckles we've also the push rods in there caulking rods so a white round with my finger on the breech faces is ample. We've already lubed the ejectors. We now hook the gun back together, slip the forend iron on. Yeah? Yeah. And then we can just apply either or the Leisure or the Pro Ferrum or whichever other brand you want to use, because everybody's got a different. Just give it a very light squirt of oil yeah yeah you can also squirt a very light squirt down the ball if you so wish and that can stay down there yeah that won't hurt you might get a little bit of a cloud it doesn't hurt to give it a wipe through i'm just massaging in that with my oily hands we now have one clean gun but that's a quick way of doing it it's my way of doing it some people are a bit more fastidious but that is a perfectly good way of cleaning a gun perfectly serviceable and i'll be a tenner please <laughs> right so let's have a little look at beatrice this is the cleanest she has been in a long time ever ever probably since i bought her in 2017 it's my engraving on there Looks quite nice, thank you very much, Jules. Well, it's a pleasure. Quite pleased with that. I thought it might be a little bit helpful just to show what is in my gun cleaning kit because I don't carry a drill around with me like Jules and I don't have the big rods. So I'll just show you what's in mine um, because it's in a little carry case. And I think from memory, it was, not from memory, from the label, it was 46 95 but I have added a couple of little bits to it. So let's have a look. So my kit comes in a tiny little travel case. I do use a couple of dusters there. Um, I do have some gun oil. I have some, some, <laughs> some bore cleaner. I have Nivea. some shotgun patches, but you can use kitchen roll instead. And then I have my brushes in there. Um, those hold the patches or you could use them to push the kitchen roll down. That's obviously for 20 and a 12. And then I have the Bisley rods, um, which obviously all screw together. Jules has just put that in there, so not too sure that's there. Um, but they screw all together um, and it's easy to carry around, easy to store. It can live on top of my cabinets and then it's all in one place and it's a small little box. So I'd just like to say thank you to the lovely Jules for cleaning my bretta for me. <laughs> you are. I'm not. So I hope you've all agree with me. <laughs> so I hope you've all enjoyed that and um, found it a little bit educational. If you've got any questions or queries, pop them in the comments. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.